everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So this is my last Easter project for this year and it's a double stepper box. It's really, really fun. I've made a stepper box before and I will link that up here and you can check that one out. I don't think it was for Easter, but it was a spring theme. I think I used daffodils on that one. I've got this really cute little um, cluster of some Easter eggs and a carrot and the little rabbit there. And I've got my gift tag and then you just take the lid off and yes, there's two tonics on the top, but these will change. But as I bring out the sides, you have all of these boxes holding those treats that I picked up from Aldi that I shared. So you can imagine there's a bit of weight to this, but it holds it. It will stand and display. It can be used for many occasions. I talked through the tutorial talking about, you know, having a nice birthday sentiment in the middle there. You don't have to have the strips as I decorate, decorated it. And you've got space on the back there as well to be able to write a message. And you can obviously add a bit more strength if you want, but you just bring around the left hand side and then bring round the right. It all folds up and then you keep it together with the lid. So let me show you how to make it. So this is the magazine that I've used. Those of you that have been following the Easter series would have seen this one feature a lot. I just really liked the papers in this one and um, I've literally just got the toppers left and this sheet I think and I've got one more over there. I've just got some scraps in here and I'm going to use the embossing folder for the lid and then you have your stamps there and there is also dies which are in amongst that as well. So getting the most out of the magazine. So for the boxes, you are going to need eight pieces of nine and a quarter by four. Along that nine and a quarter side, you want to score at two and a quarter, four and a half, six and three quarters and at nine. And then pop it on the short side and score at two and a quarter all the way down. You then want to fold and burnish and you'll need, like I said, you'll have eight of these. So do that eight times and fold and burnish all of them. Okay, so you'll have all of your eight. Now, whenever you're making lots of the same thing, I always suggest that you score them all at the same time, burnish them all at the same time, cut them all, then, you know, um, put them together. And it goes much quicker rather than doing one at a time, it's much quicker to do them, you know, in these kind of stages. So you'll have your tab on the left hand side, you'll have these shorter rectangles along the top and then these two and a quarter uh, squared squares on the bottom, let me just check, yeah, two and a quarter. It's these ones that you're cutting up. So you're gonna cut up that very small tab there and just remove that completely. I'm just going to cut it on an angle and cut up there as well. Okay so we've got our little tab to attach the card together, the box together and then you just want to cut up each of these score lines along the larger squares just up to that first score line. Okay what I also like to do is just pop it together and you'll see for me the tab's going to go on the back left of the box. So this front one here will be the one that will stay in its square form. So all of the others there, those three, I'm just going to cut a wedge away on each side. And it just means when you go to put the box together, you don't have anything hanging out the side. Um, if you want to decorate the inside of the boxes, you can do. But by the time the treats are on top, you don't see any of this anyway. So, And then once you're at this stage, you can just grab your glue. I'm going to use the quick grab for the tab because it's such a little area. Just pop that along the side here. And then just fold it over, lay one half over with the tab and then bring the other one over and you'll line them up perfectly. And then I like to just open it up, fold it the other way again. Make sure it all folds flat. That means you've got it nice and straight. And then I'm going to use my other glue now to create a stronger base. So you've got that square that you haven't touched. The one opposite to that is the back. So I'm going to pop my glue onto that piece first, then bring over one of the sides. Don't worry if it's a little bit wonky at this point. Once you lay the final one down, that will square everything off. Pop the glue on there. You see mine's a bit wonky, but once you bring this one down, it will line everything up. And you can just turn it over and then just 
apply some pressure so that's nice and secure. And like I said, if you do want to cover the inside, you can. So you should now have all eight boxes and you'll see that I've already done one half here. It, the next half is exactly the same, but you just want to make sure that you're going to start from the top right and come down to the bottom left because here we started from the top left and come down to the bottom right. So the idea is, is that the boxes will come down and then back up again like a V shape. So what I do on this side, you will do exactly the same for this side here, but it's just obviously flipped. So you'll want yourself two pieces because again, it's this one here and this measures 11 and a half by seven and it's just over seven and one eighth literally just a smidge over because by the time each box kind of just has to sit under each one and needs that little bit of clearance you'll see when they all fold up it will run nice and flush with the bottom so you just need that little bit over so if I just bring up the scoreboard so you can see literally just over the seven and one eighth there it's in between seven and one eighth and seven and a quarter so I'm not going to score this one and then stick the boxes on. I'm actually going to stick the boxes and then start to wrap it around. I think you get a much nicer finish and it means we don't have to start going into those sixteenths of an inch, those funny kind of measurements. So start off with your box and you want to make sure you have your nice continued part of the box at the front there, which was that nice square. So you've got all your join bits at the back. And like I said, if you're doing this one then you're going to start sticking up here but I'm going to start sticking this side and come down because I like like I said you want to start from the top right and come down to the bottom left for this one you'll start from the top left and come down to the bottom right so just want to make sure I I get that across because I don't want to obviously confuse anybody so I'm going to add my glue to the back panel here this glue takes a, just a little bit longer to dry i.e just a couple of minutes but it means that it will make this piece very strong once we have the mats and layers. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing it against the scoreboard and I'm lining it up with the very end of the cardstock here. So you can, you know, I'm literally pushing it against this ridge here so I know I've got it really flush with the top of my cardstock. And then I'm just going to apply some pressure inside there and just give that a minute to adhere to the cardstock. Okay, once you're happy it's in place, if you just bring around the cardstock and just pinch it just around like so, you see? And it's really snug around that corner. Bring it back into the scoreboard and just find a track that that kind of pinch lines up with and just score. So don't worry that the score line's on the opposite side, it's not, it's not gonna matter. This is a, a colour core and this is a 220 GSM, so you, I'm using quite a softer cardstock actually. But like I said, once you add the mats and layers, it will all start to firm up. But now, you see we've just got that perfect kind of wrap around the box, which is what we want. So lay it back down again, you're then going to get the next one. Again, make sure you've got the right side facing you. Pop your glue on the back again. And then this time, you're going to stick it here below this one. Now the easiest way to bring it is bring that around and now pop it into this corner. And again, just obviously you we know that that wraps around nicely because of the way we just done it. And you can push that right up to this one so you've got, you know, it running nice and flush there. And again, once you've got it in place, you can open that up and then you can just go in and apply some pressure. If it shifts or you think you've moved it, just bring up that side again. And can you hear, you get that nice kind of, I don't know what how you describe that sound, but it's, it's a satisfying sound when it just kind of slides against each other. Again, just make sure that's all secure. Okay, and then just bring it up and then just pinch around the boxes again. Don't worry if you can't pinch all the way down, it's getting that top one. Again, so I'm just finding a track so I'm just going to use the 7 inch and just go all the way down there and then I can just burnish that better. Okay so now we've got our two boxes and our score lines all in place and at the minute you can see it's wrapping around really nicely. So I'm going to get the next one 
bring around all of the boxes this time. So we have something like that. Again, you'll see everything is running lovely and flush together there. You can see them all. And then you can open it up and again, apply some pressure. So I'm just going to wrap that around. Again, pinch it. Okay, so when you stick this last one down, you'll see it will run flush with the bottom of the cardstock. And you don't need to create another score line for the left hand side here. So although there's a piece of cardstock there, there is actually no score line in this back piece. So it's just those three score lines that you'll see there. There we go. And that's what we've got here. So on the left one, you just want to do those three. But on this one, we want to create the last one. So I'm just going to wrap it all around here. And what you can do is if you, it's a bit easier to see the top. So I'm just going to bring it in right up into the corner, like so. And then I'm just going to score again, whatever's closest. So in this case, it's two and three eighths. And then that one will go around like so. So you'll have one on the right hand side which will go full wrap. This one you want to have that piece because this piece will now stick on top of that so that then when this all comes around that one will slot in like so and you'll see once the lid's on that's how it all works together. So when you take the lid off this one will come out first and then that will allow that one to fall out along with that one and then this center piece is where we will put our well I think thinking about it now I may go over this one and have a big um, sentiment in the middle there instead because again this is the only one I'm making so I wasn't sure how much space I was going to have but actually there's quite a nice um, bit of space there so that might change so they're all in place now I think it probably would be worth sticking this down now because you know where it's it's actually going to sit and then you can sit stick all the other mats and layers down so I'm going to wrap that back up and get rid of the scoreboard I'm going to add my glue all over this piece I'm going to bring that all together and so this one with all the glue I'm just sticking on here but folding that all in at the same time And once the lid's on it's going to hold everything in place as well and then I can just open that out and just make sure that I've got it flush with the top there okay so whilst that's drying I've got all of these mats and layers here it's, it's dependent on whether you want to have a larger section which I also like, so I need a bit of time to decide. So before I give you those measurements, I'm gonna give you the measurements for these boxes here, and then I can get them stuck down and think about that one. So you'll want, there's three on each, so three, six, nine to us, so 24 pieces of one and a half by two. Like I said, these are the papers from the magazine, apart from this one, I actually, because I'd, I'm starting to run out, it's from this Daisy May sack and it's this one here. And I just thought it worked really well with these papers. So I'm going to get these all stuck down and then hopefully I would have decided what I want to do with the middle there. That's everything stuck down. Now I've been thinking, if I was giving this as a birthday box, I think I would do the large section, but because this is for Easter, and because of who I'm giving it to, I don't feel I need to have a big sentiment inside. I'm actually going to do a nice tag or something on the outside. But if you did want to do the larger square, because I'm going to give you the measurements for all of this in a moment, I would suggest that you work along these three here. So I would, I would do your mat layer so that it is, so that's seven, you're looking at seven inches there. So I would do six and three quarters by now because this is a seven and one eighth or that funny just over seven and one eighth piece this piece this size measurements are a little bit odd but I would do I'd bring that up I would I would do five I think five will actually be okay so I would yeah I would do five by 
seven um, by six and three quarters. And then I do another layer on top of that and just drop that down by a quarter inch increment on each of those sides so you've got a nice border. But because and I've already cut all of these pieces as well, so I think I'm just going to carry on. But I think it'd been, I think it'd look really nice, especially if maybe it was like a 21st birthday. You maybe had some jewellery and some sweets and just some smaller gifts in each of the boxes. And then you know when it stands up and displayed with a big, you know, happy birthday or big 21 in the middle. I think that'd look lovely. And again for Christmas, I think this would look lovely with a big Merry Christmas there. So, right. You'll need, if you want to do it like me though, you'll want one piece that's just going to go down here. Now, actually this size that I give you here will also be the same size if you want to um, do the outer side, which I will be doing. So you will actually want, let me just, so it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then that's another piece. So you'll want eight pieces of two by, uh, sorry, no, this is um, six and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, like I said, it's a funny length just because of the height of the box. So that's going to go there. So eight pieces. Then you'll want, was four, yeah, four pieces. So you'll see there's one here and one here. So that one's going to go there and here. And these again are two. All of them are two wide but this one is five and one eighth. Okay, again, it will all be listed on my blog. Then you'll want four pieces of, yeah, so, and these are gonna go here and here. So again, two by three and a quarter. So that one there and there. And then four pieces of two by one and a half. And they're gonna go there and there. Okay, so I'm gonna go and get that stuck down. So all of the sides are decorated. I haven't done the back. I mean, if you want, maybe want to write a message on there, you could turn it into a little bit of a card as well. I'm going to leave it. It's pretty strong. I don't think it needs to have that, but I have used this lovely paper that I had another sheet of, and then I've continued it on that side there, but then I've got this polka dot on these two inner ones there. So it kind of, when you turn it over, you know, it's because it, there's more obviously exposed on this one because we stuck this one over that one if that makes any sense but this is the bit that you want to obviously make sure um, it has all the pattern and stuff that you like so kind of thinking now maybe I should have done that pattern on here so you really saw all the flowers but I might I have these here so I think I might just fussy cut the odd one and maybe just fill some of that space so, so that's all ready and it's drying and firming up really nicely so now we just need to make the lid so this is a piece of cardstock which is four and a half by six and three quarters but now what you want to do is just take a little bit off so you're just going to take a slither which is a sixteenth of an inch but it's it's that okay you can just see there it is there that's what you want to take just a slither so you're now going to come down just under the four and a half so like so okay and then you want to score at one inch on all four sides so one 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 and one next you want to fold and burnish your score lines and then you're going to on the sides here just cut up the two score lines to the first score line and then just take little wedges off of the squares here so we've got our little tabs and then do the same at this end and then you want to grab your glue and you're going to do one end so just pop your glue on your tab and bring that under and the side around and just make sure you get a nice corner there once we add the pattern paper onto this again it'll strengthen it you might want to have a, a bigger tab you might want one and a half or you might want to have two inches coming down the side of the box it's entirely up to you and again I'm just going to spread that glue out and then just make 
make sure that all sticks down nicely. As you'll see, we've got one end there of the box. Okay, now what I would suggest you do to make sure you get your lid to fit is pop it on the top here, so you'll see, and then you can bring the sides around and then stick the lid together. That way you know that it will fit and you've got a nice snug fit, okay? I mean, it will work anyway because of the measurement I gave you, but sometimes people might pull in if I just explain here, you can pull your tab in a bit too much and then maybe you've got this little bit overhanging there. You might not really take too much notice of that, but that will really impact the way the lid works. So that's why I always stress that you want to make sure that you line these up really flush with each other so there's no overhang. Or sometimes you might be short as well, you might stick it like that and this is sticking out. It's those things that will then loosen the lid. So for that reason, pop it in here and then you can see I can, you know, really have a nice wrap. Make sure you don't get obviously any glue onto the, the box. I might just take this away or just, you can rub that out. It's actually going to be okay, but just bring that down around like so. And then I'm just going to slide that out and then I can just, I've got a little bit of wiggle time, just a few seconds with this one. But now, once that's completely dry, you've got a nice fitting lid. Now you could also add some ribbon, uh, maybe around the bottom, thread it through, do the whole punch that I've done with my lids before. You might want to do a belly wrap around this, or belly band. You might not want to have the lid on the top, but obviously you've got your sweets there, but other people like to put things together differently. And um, yeah, there, there's that. I think it looks wonderful. I, I don't think the person that you give this to is gonna realize what's inside there and just how much is maybe in there. But now I'm going to just do all the mats and les there and I'm going to emboss that plaid um, pattern on there. And uh, yeah, then we're nearly finished. Okay, so I'm not gonna emboss the top. Instead, I'm gonna use this pattern paper, which is again from the magazine. So this is two and one eighth by four and a half. That's gonna go on the top. And then you'll want two pieces that are three quarters of an inch by four and a half for the long sides. And then again, three quarters of an inch by two and one eighth for the short side. So I'm gonna get them stuck down. I've cut this topper here, and then I think I'm just gonna cut a, or stamp, sorry, a happy Easter sentiment that I've got, and just have a little gift tag hanging off. And um, all the rest of these I will stick down and uh, share them on my blog, so you'll see how that all looks. But we'll get all this finished here. So I completely changed the top of the lid there, which you would have noticed. I realised I had loads of Easter things. I haven't done as much Easter maybe decor as I did last year. I have playlists full of really lovely home decor wreaths and stuff like that. And I used a lot of these things and like the wooden bunnies and I thought, and the carrots, and I thought I've got these still, so let's use them. And I've just created this little <laughs> topper and then I've just stamped Easter greetings so I can write a little message on the back there. And then I'm just gonna pop the treats in. So I have got some other treats as well, but I'm not going to, they're kind of a little bit more personal. And if I share them, then the person will know who it's for. So these are the little treats that I picked up from Aldi and I'm just going to fill the boxes just so you can see just how much you can get inside here. Okay so I filled all of the boxes, I'll hold it up in a second, but these are little chocolate chicks so that tub will fill two of these. Then you've got the little sheep Again, two, and then these are the bunnies, which I also used in the little novelty carrots that I've got. And then I've just popped a ton of this tea cake in the, the very top there, so you can see. But it holds it all, and that is, there's a weight to that. It really, yeah, it does hold a lot. So I'm just going to wrap it all up, make sure I do the right one. So that one, and then that one, and then pop the lid on 
the top. So that is my double stepper box. I think it's come together really well. Of course you've got space on the back there if you do want to write a message. I think they would make lovely table gifts. You know, we're all joining our friends and family in the garden now, so I think that would be a lovely gift to give them. And of course it will work for many occasions. I can see this being used a lot uh, for Christmas time. So as always, I'll link all of the product that I've used in the description box below. Check out some of the tutorials that are popping up now you might like. I'll also pop that stepper box card up here as well as at the beginning. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching as always. Please subscribe if you haven't and you've enjoyed today's video. Hit the notification bell and that way you won't miss out when I upload a new video. See you soon. Bye.